Hi, I'm Tony from realmeneatgreen.com and today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own easy artisan bread at home using uh, Mark Bittman's recipe for no-knead bread that was made popular by the New York Times a few years ago. Alright, so it's really, really easy. You don't even have to knead the dough. All you do is mix the stuff together, water, yeast and flour and let it rise for about 18 hours. And you pop it in the oven and you have some excellent bread. But we're going to take it a little bit farther. So we got some flour. So you need about two cups of white flour. That's a yeah, about two cups of just regular white flour, all purpose. And then we can also add in about a cup of whole wheat flour. Add some nice texture. go. We're going to add about two teaspoons of salt. Yeah, that's close. And now we need about a quarter teaspoon of instant yeast. Make sure you have instant yeast, otherwise it won't rise fast enough. It's a very, very small amount of yeast for this recipe. That's probably a little bit more than you need, but it's about a quarter teaspoon. So we have our flour, we have our yeast, and we have our salt. Now we're gonna make it our own. You can use anything that you wanna add. You can add some sunflower seeds, but today I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds because I really like nice seedy bread. So maybe about a, it's a quarter cup of some pumpkin seeds. I toasted it up a bit earlier, so I'm gonna give that a stir. Now I've got a really good tip for you guys. If you've ever tried to make whole wheat bread, but you came out with like a thick bread-like thing that was closer to a brick than actual bread, you can use um, wheat gluten. And if you add that into whole wheat bread or anything, any kind of um, bread recipe using whole wheat flour, it gives it a lift and makes it nice and spongy rather than a solid mass. So you need very, very little. I think, say, probably about a, it's a teaspoon of wheat gluten. So we'll give that a stir. some more sunflower seeds, really like seedy bread. So now we need about a cup and a half of water. And this recipe is great because you don't even really need to add sugar for the yeast because the yeast will be just as happy munching on the flour. But I'm gonna add it a little bit of honey into the water just to add some more flavor. So stuff that in there. So this dough will not be pretty. It's gonna be a shaggy mess. So I'm gonna give that a good stir just to make sure all the flour is incorporated in there. That's pretty good. So we're going to let this sit for 18 hours. So just cover it up with a thin sheet of uh, plastic or you can get a moist towel of some sort. I'm just going to cover it and let it sit for 18 hours. And uh, after that time, it should have doubled. And then we're going to put it in the oven and bake it up. And we're going to have some amazing bread. So see you in 18 hours. All right. So it's been about 18 hours. Actually, a few more than 18. It's about, been about 24 hours. And this is what our dough looks like. It's still kind of shaggy, but it's doubled in size since we first mixed it together. It starts to develop a slight sourdough taste, which is also really nice. So we got our dough ready. I've uh, preheated our oven. It's at 450. And we got it, got it the oven to be really, really hot. And uh, this is what we're going to be putting our dough in. This is a cast iron pot. But you can use anything that has a lid in it that's, in, that's oven proof up to 450. So if you have a Pyrex, that works too, like a glass container. But I've got a nice... Nice cast iron. All right, so we're going to take out our dough. To save myself the mess, I've got some, uh, some wax paper down there. I'm gonna put some nice whole wheat flour on there. You can use cornmeal or whatever you want to dust your flour with. So I'm gonna scoop out my doughy mess here. All right. Alright, there we go. What you want to do is just pull up the corners. Remember, this is a no knead recipe, so there's no kneading involved. Just you want to pull up each of the corners there. You kind of form a ball like shape. <laughs> there you go. 
I flipped it over so the seams at the bottom. We're just gonna let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes. Let it set a little bit more. And uh, in the meantime, we're gonna get our baking container here. We're gonna heat it up in the oven. So the cast iron or whatever you're using, it kind of acts as a double oven inside the oven, keeping the steam in, and that's what will give us a really nice crust. Awesome, so we'll, we'll uh, wait about 20 minutes and we'll pull out our cast iron when it's really hot. So we've got our dough and it's been resting for about 20 minutes while our cast iron pot is heating up in the oven. So now we're ready to get on our baking action. Awesome. Okay, so make sure you wear some mittens because it's going to be really hot. All right, so I'm going to take out my baking container. Open her up. Again, make sure you're really careful because it's very, very hot. And I've got my dough here. It's in a roundish shape, but don't worry about it because it's still really goopy. But remember how we put it on a wax sheet? It'll be easy to flip it in. All right. And there we go. So if it doesn't fall in perfectly, don't worry about it. So just grab it. Give her a shake. There you go. We're going to close the lid. And we're going to bake it for half an hour. It's really, really important. Make sure you don't open the oven or open the lid to peak. If you do that, it might ruin the nice crust that we want on our nice bread. So we're going to bake it for about half an hour. Remember, no peaking. And we'll have some nice, awesome smells coming from the oven. So your house will smell of bready goodness. But half an hour. Our bread has been in the oven for about half an hour. We're going to take it out, take off the lid, and we're going to let it brown so that the crust is going to be nice and crunchy. All right. go let's take off the lid so it'll take about 15 minutes or so I don't want a super dark crust but if you do like a darker crust you can leave it in for about 20 minutes but I'm gonna aim for 15 so put it back in there all right. all right it's been 15 minutes and our bread is ready so let's get the oven open all right Oh yeah! <laughs> so that extra 15 minutes with the lid off gave our bread a really nice crust. So, there you go. And I've got a rack here in waiting. So it's really important to let it cool. So, I know it's tempting, but we gotta let it set for a bit. And there we go, that's our no need rustic bread. All you have to do is leave it and let it sit and this is what you get. So give it a try. It's not only cheap, but nothing beats the smell of some really delicious fresh baked bread you made yourself. So give it a try and let me know how it goes. So we're gonna let it cool for maybe half an hour before you stab it with a knife and go at it. And for more recipes, go to realmeneatgreen.com.